today I want to show you some of the ways that we garden here because we on this farm use a number of different methods to start our gardens and to maintain our gardens and so I want to show you two of the ways that we do that in this space here. In this area over here where it's nice and dark behind me you can see we've used compost and we've taken cardboard and paper and we laid it down over the over the ground and then we have piled compost on top in in raised areas and then we've left the pathways clear and we're going to fill those with mulch and then over here we've done a similar thing but with a different resource so we've taken we've sheet mulched it and instead of bringing in high quality soil what we've done is we've laid cardboard and paper as a weed barrier and then we've topped it with three to six inches of carbon material so this is a mixture of sawdust and wood chips and we've dumped this over top of our our paper and our cardboard and we've raked it into long raised beds just like in the same shape as we have over there but we're using a different set of materials the reason we've done this in different ways is because we are planting different things here this these beds over here that are topped with compost are going to be our intensively grown salad greens and root vegetable area so we want to be able to direct seed our lettuces and our asian greens and our arugula right into that nice fluffy soil and so we need that compost there because our native soil is chunky and full of clay and even though it's decent it has decent a decent amount of organic matter and a decent amount of nutrients in it it's a little bit rough and the germination of those delicate seeds is low if we go directly into that soil not to mention it gets very weedy very quickly and it's hard to manage so we have brought in compost and we've layered it here into our raised beds for salad greens and here we've done it differently and we've used carbon material, a mulch, on top of paper and cardboard because we are planting large summer crops that we've started in our greenhouse and that we're transplanting out. And so because we're doing very different plants here, we can do it in different ways. So I'm going to show you uh, what, how I'm going to use this type of garden by, show, by planting some okra into this bed that I've made. So again, this is layers of cardboard and paper covered with sawdust and wood chips. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pocket plant into this material, into this carbon material. So I'm going to take my trowel, I'm going to dig a nice pocket, a hole, into this bed until I reach the, the paper and the cardboard underneath. And once I get there, I'm going to stop and I'm going to just puncture the paper and the cardboard here so that when I plant my pocket, plant my okra in here, it, the roots can reach down through the pocket, through the paper, into that nice soil underneath without letting any of the weeds pop up through. So this is a really thickly layered for one very important reason, because we have a lot of really bad weeds that we don't want, that we can't manage on this scale just by hand. So we're covering this to suppress the weeds as much as possible. So when we're doing our pocket, when we're planting our pocket, I'm going to take a little bit of compost and I'm going to fill the pocket so that the soil around, directly around where the plant, where the okra is going to be, is nice high quality compost and it'll help this break down and turn into soil over time as well. So I'm going to do three pockets and prepare the space for my plants before I take them out of the pot because I have one pot with three okra plants in there and they're going to have to be separated before I can plant them. So I'm going to show you that as well. So I'm going to take a pocket here and then I'm going to space about two feet apart 
which is a little bit close, but we do most of our plants this way. We try and use the space as efficiently as possible. So I'm going to take about two feet, put another pocket, dig another pocket down to the cardboard and paper. I'm going to puncture that cardboard and paper, and then I'm going to put compost in the hole. I'm going to go one more and do a third hole two feet down. Puncture my cardboard and put a little compost in it. Now, time for our seedlings. Ooh, it's wet. My butt's getting wet. <laughs> oh well, part of the job. So, I'm going to take these three oak ridge plants that are in a four inch pot and I'm going to separate them and hopefully this will go nice and smoothly because I planted them in really finely sifted seed starting mix and so they shouldn't get stuck on anything or clump together too badly. Now I can tell they're ready to come out of the pot because I can start to see the roots just barely popping through these holes and much more than that and they will start to get a little bit root bound and that's not what we want. So I can see here they're just starting to outgrow their space, but they're not so densely intertwined that they're going to be impossible to take apart. So I'm going to loosen this soil just a little bit and I'm going to deposit what falls off evenly between the pockets. And now what I've got is kind of this root mass. And if I hold onto the stems really, really gently and just sort of shake, these roots will separate without me ever having to pull or tug or break them off. So this is a really gentle process. And I don't want to do this in full sun. So I'm choosing the end of the day where the, there's a lot of cloud cover because I don't want them to dry out or get harmed in this process. So I'm going to drop one of my seedlings in there. I'm going to gently, see, they just come apart really nicely because of that finely sifted seed mix. That there, and this one in the third pocket. Now, I want to make sure that when I'm filling in my hole and getting these all nice and set up, that I'm not burying the stem too much. So I want to take a little more compost, and I want to hold my seedling upright here and just sort of pile that compost in around the roots press down so that it's nice and firm and it pushes out any air pockets and then I'm going to push that mulch in around the base but I don't want it to come up too high around the stem. So just a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with my others here. There we go. Fill that area in. All right, last one, same process. Get those nice and set up. Now, I'm expecting some cool nights to come up over the next couple of days. And these are warm season, warm loving plants and they're not gonna be very happy if it gets down into the 30s at night if they're unprotected. Now, normally, with okra, they recommend you waiting a couple of weeks, waiting till the end of April or the beginning of May to do this, but I want to get a head start on my planting. I want them to get a chance to get their roots established, and I want to get an earlier harvest. So I'm going to plant them early, I'm going to plant them now, and I'm going to plan on protecting them like I have my other plants. So I'm going to take my homemade cloche, I'm going to cover my little okra plant, so it has its own little mini greenhouse. I'm gonna pile this mulch a little bit higher up around the, the bottle and it'll pro provide this really nice mini greenhouse protection around my baby seedling so that it can adjust and not get shocked. And on when it's really hot, I'll take this off. So there we go. These are some okra babies going in the ground into a sheet mulched garden. 
with the use of mostly cardboard and mulch. And you can do this to start any large space of garden, just layering with cardboard, adding whatever materials. If you wanted to go a step further and do a lasagna garden, it's a similar process, but it goes a little bit further than this. So you would start with a sheet mulch, you would start with some carbon material of some kind. Normally with lasagna gardening, you would put a little bit of compost or, or sort of fertilizer, manure or something right over top of the grass that, or the lawn area that you're turning into garden and then you would put your cardboard and then you would put your mulch and your leaves and your grass clippings and more and you would just layer this up like a lasagna and then you would pocket plant into it in a similar way that we've just done here. But this is, I'm doing this on a really large scale so I can't lasagna this entire alley so I'm doing what I can that's going to take the least amount of time. So I'm using the materials I have and I'm doing this quickly and setting this up rapidly. Um, so this is going to reduce weed pressure and what I may have to do as this mulch breaks down over time um, and throughout the season as these these plants are growing I may need to come in and add a little extra nitrogen because as the mulch is breaking down it's going to sequester nitrogen and hold on to it and will release it gradually as it breaks down but it may tie up some of the nitrogen that these plants need so I may have to add a little extra as like right around the base of the plants as they're growing so I can do this by adding kelp or fish emulsion um, or by adding urine um, which I get my boys to just pee in jugs so that I can apply uh, fertilizer just for this purpose um, so I may need to keep that in mind and just watch my plants and make sure that they're not stunted or having any issues so keep in mind that if you're gonna do a garden this way and pocket plant into carbon material that you're gonna want to plan for eventually being you know having a resource to fertilize with just in case but usually if they have access to the to the good soil underneath then it shouldn't be a problem the roots are going to get what they need so thanks for tuning in and i hope you join me on my next garden adventure i don't know <laughs>